Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship for this uh, Sunday, November 14th. I got tongue tied a little bit there. This Sunday, November 14th here at Resurrection. You might notice camera's a little different. I'm simply doing it off in the pulpit here. It is a lot easier than having to set up the camera in very different places. So uh, indulge me uh, just this week. I'd appreciate that. A uh, couple of things happening here at Resurrection that you will want to be aware of. A new Bible study has started. I'm calling it The Road to Christmas. We started last week with the need for Christmas, going back to Genesis chapter 3. That is available on our YouTube channel, so simply uh, check that out online. We'd love to have you join us. If you watch, you, are, you all are watching on YouTube, simply go to our channel page Page and you'll find the Bible study uh, there with the other videos. Um, what else is going on? Next Sunday, in person only, Pastor Jeff Howell from St. Paul Lutheran Church and School in the Grand Crossing neighborhood of this city will be uh, coming to bring the word as part of our 170th anniversary. Uh, we've had uh, two guest speakers thus far, Pastor Belial, a son of this congregation, uh, Dr. Buss, our district president, and now one of our neighboring pastors will be coming to bring the word to, for us. So that will be online only uh, this coming Sunday this coming Sunday. So if you'd like to hear uh, Pastor Howell, come on and join us in person here at Resurrection. Uh, our Advent Midweek services are coming soon as well. They will be held, the first one will be held in just a couple of weeks at uh, St. Philip. Uh, I'll be preaching that. After that will be uh, St. Paul uh, Grand Crossing and then here at Resurrection. So uh, some of these services will be streamed. That will be depending on the host church, uh, but you'll get links to that as the case arises. So I hope that you will be able to or you will consider joining us uh, for any of these special services coming up. Our order of service for this Sunday is right there on your screen, so let's follow along and begin our day and our week with God. Let's begin. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now hear from our choir. <laughs>
reading is from Daniel chapter 12. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be deceived, delivered, every one whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as, he sat at the, and as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn this day is, My Lord, What a Morning. Please sing along.
My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall, you will hear the trumpet sound to wake the nations underground. Look into my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall, you will hear the sinner cry to wake the nations underground. Looking to my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall. You will hear the Christian shout to wake the nations underground. Looking to my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What wonderful stones! And what wonderful buildings. The disciples and Jesus with them were at the temple. They were there to do what one did in the temple, to pray, to offer sacrifice, to be in the presence of God. And as they left the temple, they left by saying what so many others had said. What a magnificent building. What wonderful stones. What beautiful buildings. Here at Resurrection, these stones are kind of ordinary, let's be honest. It's yellow brick. There are lots of places with yellow brick. The chancel, it's not as ornate as some churches. The altar isn't. But there's two things that people notice about this building. One is the window, that magnificent piece of stained glass. We have the big one with the star. Frankly, as a pastor, I get the better view here than you guys do. Y'all get to see my mug up front every Sunday, but I get to see that window, and you. I get the better view, let's be honest. But you also get, from the pews, another amazing view. The thing that I usually have my back to. I can see it now because I'm looking at a camera. And that is the lighted cross. It's really a magnificent feature of this building. Not many other churches have something like this. And in fact, if you were to turn all the lights out, the cross really stands out. Let's try that now. I'm going to try and experiment with this camera. You can really notice it now, can't you? That light from the cross cutting through the darkness like a knife through hot butter. And let's bring the lights up again. We have three windows, in fact, here at Resurrection. 
the big one and two stained glass windows with doves on them made by one of our members. What wonderful stones! Maybe not wonderful stones, they're stones, they're brick, they're important, we need it. What beautiful windows, what a beautiful cross. We value this place, don't we? If you've been a member of Resurrection, you'll remember when we worshipped in a different spot right next door in what's now the gymnasium. We've had to worship there from time to time. During COVID, we did it on a few occasions to really space out. And on occasion, if the heat doesn't work right or if the air conditioning isn't turned on, we will go back in there and remember the good old days. But this is home. In this beautiful place, in this beautiful sanctuary, in this temple where God dwells. The building was built in the mid-1970s, and this building will not last forever. You're not going to like this sermon, perhaps, if you think that the church is all about a building, about a physical structure. You're not going to like this sermon if you think that the building of Resurrection Lutheran Church is going to be here forever. Because it won't. Stones will crumble. Glass will shatter. Wood will rot or burn. That is the nature of things. That is the nature of all things that human beings create. It will not last forever. What is the first commandment? Do you remember? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What is a god? Anything that we fear, love, or trust above all other things. For the people of ancient Israel, their god dwelt in the temple, but for so many of them, their god was the temple. Religion for the ancient Israelites, or not even really ancient at this point, for the uh, pre-modern, we can say this is a bit more before pre-modern, but for the people of Israel alive during the period of the Roman Empire, religion was everything. Now, why do I say that, and what do I mean by that? What I mean is that uh, if you're an occupied nation, if you don't have self-determination or self-governance, you... Hold on to those things which give you identity. And for the people of Israel, it was their religion. And the embodiment of that religion was the temple, was Zion, was Jerusalem, was the holy city where God dwelt. And so, upon leaving the temple one day, doing in there what people do in the temple, praying, Offering sacrifice, being in the presence of God, the disciples remarked to Jesus, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what beautiful buildings. There is a sense for the disciples that their God was not so much the God who dwelt in the temple, but the temple itself as was the case for many of the people of Israel. It's the thing that was the most defining feature of Jerusalem, and it was the symbol of national unity and identity for the people of Israel. We have those symbols too, don't we? The American flag is one such symbol of national identity, national unity. Or the buildings in Washington, D.C., the Capitol, the White House. In Chicago, we have such buildings as the, uh, what do they call it now, the Willis Tower, and of course, the Bean, or the Buckingham Fountain, or any other structure. In my hometown of Buffalo, New York, City Hall is a pretty cool building, and of course, the stadium where the Bills play. These buildings, these structures, gave the people of Israel a sense of national unity and national identity, but Jesus is doing what he so often does. 
smashing idols, smashing obstacles, bringing about something new. They say to him, what wonderful stones and what beautiful buildings. And he says to them, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. You're not going to like this sermon if your faith, if your religion is tied up in a building, even this building. The disciples didn't like Jesus, his words, in this moment. They loved him, sure, he was their teacher, he was their leader, he was their rabbi. But the temple, that was something special. That was the place where God dwelt, and in some respects, the temple itself, those wonderful stones and beautiful buildings, became that which they feared, loved, and trusted above all else, became their God. Jesus said this for a couple of purposes. One, to remind them that the temple would not last forever. In fact, within some of their lifetimes, it would be destroyed in the year 70, 70 AD. Let's say this was about uh, 32, 33 AD, something like that. (coughs) Excuse me. In the year 70 AD, the temple would be destroyed. Not even 40 years later. But why would the temple be destroyed? Because it no longer had a purpose. It no longer had a need except to sit there and look pretty. To be wonderful stones and beautiful buildings. Where God dwelt. That's the key. People sometimes had more faith in the temple, in the building, than the God who dwelt in the building. Except the God who dwelt in the building was dwelling among the people, was dwelling among the disciples, was reminding them that the temple was just a building, was inviting them to deeper faith. Where is your faith, O disciples? In a building or in the God who dwells within a building? In the temple or in me? The temple was an important part of religious life in Israel. Don't get me wrong. It was absolutely vital. The sacrificial system, the killing of animals, their blood shed for the forgiveness of sins went on there. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the temple, there is no shedding of blood. Without the temple, there is no salvation. The temple was important. The temple was a big deal. The temple was needed for the salvation of the people of Israel. But it would no longer be needed. Sacrifices were made in the temple. Hundreds of animals. Buckets of blood. But now, in just a few weeks, in our chronology in the gospel there would be but one sacrifice made for the forgiveness of sins. Only one more is needed. One all-availing sacrifice, not in a temple, but on a cross. The disciples had just left the temple, But they were walking with the temple incarnate. They were walking with the one who fulfilled all the purpose of the temple. Going back to the first sacrifice, that of animals to clothe Adam and Eve from their nakedness, to the other sacrifices of Cain and Abel, to Abraham, to Moses on Sinai, to Solomon when he built that first temple, And of course, the tabernacle before it. That first temple was destroyed. The second was rebuilt, and it was beautiful. 
And now today, a wall remains where people who still have their faith in the temple go and weep and wail and mourn its loss. Our faith is not in the temple. Our faith is not in a building, even this building. Our faith is in the God who dwells here. In word and in sacrament. But when would this happen? When would the temple be destroyed? Peter, James, John, and Andrew said, Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? Jesus told the disciples this to prepare them for a dual reality. The reality of his own death. The reality that his death would uh, bring about the fact that we no longer need a temple. We no longer need a temple to offer sacrifice. Christ's sacrifice covered it all. But also to remind the disciples that the physical temple would be destroyed. It would be a traumatic moment for the people of Israel. There would be more trauma to follow for Christians. There would be persecutions. Many would come in my name saying, I am he, they will lead many astray. There will be antichrists. What do we mean by antichrist? Do we mean a big red giant person thing with horns sticking out of the head? No, we don't. An antichrist is a false teacher. Many will come leading astray. They will lead many astray. Hear of wars and rumors of wars? Don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed, dear Christian, when war is declared even against you. Don't be alarmed when churches crumble or fall. Don't be alarmed when institutions fail. Don't be alarmed when congregations shrink. Do not be alarmed, dear Christian, when the world that you love and cherish seems to be ending all around you. When there are wars and rumors of wars, when nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Be on your guard when persecution comes. Be on your guard when you are criticized for being a Christian. Be on your guard when you're bullied, when you're picked on. And it's no longer socially acceptable to believe in Jesus. The gospel will still be proclaimed. Building or no building. Salvation will still be accomplished. Temple or no temple. God will still love his people. Even if the institutions that his people built up will crumble to dust. You may be delivered to trial delivered over. Don't be anxious. God gives you a comforter, the Holy Spirit, spoken of in verse 11 of our gospel text. Does God dwell in buildings made of brick with wonderful crosses and beautiful stained glass? Well, yes. But only in so far as we dwell there. For God dwells within you, tabernacling within you. Your body becomes his temple, the place where God dwells. We love our buildings. We love our structures. But look in the mirror and see the place where God dwells. See the place where his Holy Spirit makes his residence. We care for this building We clean it. We maintain it. We take care of the heating and the cooling. We make sure water is not getting in the basement. We redo the roof. We repaint. Because we love this place. But this is only a structure made of human hands. Your body, made by God, is in a sense more his dwelling place than even a building like this. 
Take care of it. Maintain it. With God's word. With the sacrament of the altar. Even by being in this place. Not so that you can be in a pretty building, in a beautiful structure, in a place that means a lot to you going back. But so that you can be edified by the other temples of God around you. By your sisters and brothers in Christ. Don't be anxious. Don't be anguished. Don't be afraid, even when car alarms go off outside. We're going to pause this so that we can wait this out. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid when you might hear the sounds of gunshots. Don't be anxious or afraid when you hear news of Christians, of people that you love being persecuted in this nation and others. You will be hated, Jesus says, by all for his name's sake. Because when they hate you, when they pick on you, when they make a mockery of you, it's not you that they hate. It is the God who dwells within you. But remember that you are God's dwelling place, dear Christian. From the moment of your baptism, For the moment when the Spirit first entered in, God is with you this day. They may be able to destroy a temple. One day even these temples will crumble to dust. My grandmothers just did. I return home this afternoon, if you're watching on Sunday, for her burial tomorrow. The God who dwells in you will not see you end. You will endure on into eternity. Bricks may crumble. Glass may shatter. Wood may burn. But God endures forever and so will you. Where have you placed your faith this day? In a building, in a structure, in an institution, in a congregation, because I'll tell you, all those things, none of those things will last forever. They will all cease. They will all end. Even in a person, in yourself. We say believe in yourself. That's true to a point. But none of us will live forever or last forever. Only God. Put your faith in him. Your trust in him. And let him see you on to glory. Built on a rock, the church shall stand even when steeples are falling. Crumbled have spires in every land. Bells still are chiming and calling. Calling you to live forever. Even when building and institutions crumble calling you to faith in the one who forgives you of your sin, who brings you to everlasting life, who picks you up when you are crumbled and broken down, when you have been betrayed by faith in institutions and people that fail. Your God never will. Your Jesus never will. Put your faith in him this day and only in him. And be at peace with God peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, O Lord, our God and Father, for all your goodness. We praise you, especially for the everlasting covenant you have made with us through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that every good work we do would be pleasing in your sight for his sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your church throughout the world, and keep us ready at all times for your Son's glorious return. Lead us to proclaim with zeal his coming to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Holy Lord, for the fruits of the earth provided by your hand. Supply the needs of all who grow, process, and distribute our food, and move us to share these bountiful gifts with our neighbors in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Behold the sick and infirm, the dying and all in need. Grant them healing of body and patience to endure their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give repentance and faith to all who approach the altar at Christ's gracious invitation, that they may find favor in your eyes and receive his true body and blood for the salvation of their souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these and all our petitions, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Built on the Rock, the Church Will Stand. Please sing along. Built on the rock, the church shall stand, even when steeples are falling. Crumbled have spars in every land, bells still are chiming and calling, calling the young and old to rest. But above all, the soul distressed longing for rest everlasting surely in temples made with hands god the most high is not dwelling high above earth his temple stands all earthly temples excelling yet he who dwells in heaven above chooses to live with us in love 
making our bodies his temple. We are God's house of living stones, built for his own habitation. He who baptismal grace us owns, heirs of his wondrous salvation. Were we but to his name to tell, yet he would deign with us to dwell, with all his grace and his favor. Here stands the font before our eyes, telling how God has received us. The altar recalls Christ's sacrifice, and what his supper here gives us. Here sound the scriptures that proclaim Christ yesterday, today the same, and evermore our Redeemer. Grant then, O God, your will be done, that when the church bells are ringing, many in saving faith may come where christ his message is bringing i know my own my own know me you not the world my face shall see my peace i leave with you amen